Thank you so very much for being with us here on this edition of We're Burning Daylight. I know everybody's getting all their final preparations ready for Christmas, which is right here, right up on us, on the doorstep if you were. But before you get to that day, would you take time out just to give thanksgiving to the Lord? Would you thank Him for coming to this earth, knowing that His ultimate goal was to give His life on a cross? Because of the cross, we can have life and have it, Oh, hallelujah to the full. Because Jesus died and Jesus was placed in a tomb. But praise the Lord, he did not stay there. He was a, resurrected on the third day. And he sits at the right hand of the Father ever interceding for each of us. I am so thankful for that. Would you be thankful for that in this time, in this season, giving the Lord this rightful praise that we, he deserves. Well, we're going to read God's Word today, and we're going to go uh, to Acts chapter 4. We're going to read a couple of portions out of this chapter, and then move over into 1 John. So together we read, As we were speaking to the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word, they believed. I said they believed. And the number of the men came up to be about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem. When Ananias, the high priest, and Cyphus, uh, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family... And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, which you can reread if you would in chapter 3, uh, he said, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you. The builders which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they heard the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated, common men, and they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Hallelujah, I love that verse. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For they are not, they are notable sign has been performed through them and is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that they may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone of this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, Whether it is right in the sight of God, hallelujah, to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. What a powerful verse. I challenge you. To put it to memory. And when we, when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, for all were praising God for what had happened. For the man of whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. I want to jump over into verse 12, 32. Let us pick up here. Now, the full number of those who had believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of these things and belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And with great grace was upon them all. 
There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as many had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, by which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, son sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. It's a good place for us to move over into our reading in 1 John today. And let us pick up and just read just a little bit of it before we move into our devotion. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God or for many prophets have gone out into the world. By this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which is, you have heard was coming and now in the world already. Little children, you are from God and will overcome him, them. For he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from the God. Whoever God knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. Amen. For by this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Let us pick up our devotion today. We're reading it's called Tongues of Men and Angels. May we partake together. The feeling of the Spirit always affects the tongue. Hmm. Got it? Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Does not urge us to be silent, but to speak from love. Love compels us to speak of Jesus. The most common hate crime committed by Christians is not to speak. Silence demonstrates a lesser love for Jesus, for if we truly love him and experience him, we cannot constrain or restrain our mouths. When the presence of Jesus is real, the human vessel cannot contain him. Love for Jesus and others must spill out. Let it be so, Lord. Peter and John explain, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Verse 4 and 20. Chapter 4, verse 20. This is the unquestionable pattern of the book of Acts. Jesus promised that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will be his witnesses. Recall chapter 1, verse 8. The disciples were filled with the Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. We read in chapter 2, verse 4. Peter was filled with the Spirit and said, verse four, chapter 4, verse 8, the disciples were refilled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with Boldness, verse 31. Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, would not stop speaking if we looked ahead in chapter 6, verse 13. In fact, we saw Jesus and said, chapter 7, verse 55, 56, the Holy Spirit was poured out on Cornelius and his household and they spoke with tongues and magnified God. If you'll take a look ahead again in chapter 10, verse 44 and 46. In Ephesus, when the Holy Spirit came upon the group of believers, they spoke with tongues and prophesied, declares chapter 19, verse 6. The filling of the Holy Spirit always immediately affects the tongue in various ways and at various times. If you need a little bit more understanding, look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. The mouth is always involved and the mouth always magnifies Jesus. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1, 21. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we speak and we speak boldly of Jesus. John, he clarified that by this we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. In our final reading of 1 John 4, 2, we have become aware of that. If zealous Pentecostals, woo, zealous Pentecostals, hallelujah, oh, if they have the issue of overemphasizing tongues, cautious evangelicals have often excused themselves 
from the clear prescription of speech in the scripture. When men and women are full of the Spirit, they immediately speak out and magnify Jesus. Fullness of the Spirit means that Jesus swells in us in the bursting, hallelujah, and overflowing point. I'm getting excited. I'm thinking, you can see that. Getting ahead of myself, if you would. When Jesus invades our spirit, we cannot but open the mouths and speak in tongues, prophesy, hallelujah, preach boldly, and witness and exalt the magnificent Son of God. When Jesus invaded earth, angels could not contain the wonder and burst into praise over Bethlehem. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The inviolable result of the Spirit's feeling is a bursting heart and speaking mouth and the mouth that super exalts Jesus. On this, the tongue of men and angels agree. Oh, and I pray that you would agree today as we open our mouth and let our voice declare, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. What a glorious day and a chapter we are closing. Tomorrow, if the Lord does not return tonight, Oh, hallelujah, and coming to catch his bride away. And I pray that you're ready and I'm ready. And oh, let that trumpet blast out. We're going to wake up to another Christmas morning. And I pray that the first present you open up is that of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and greet him in the morning, his marvelous, majestic, hallelujah name being declared and shouted into the rooftops of your own home. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, it's a Merry Christmas, but it is, it is first of all, Lord, thank you for this day is your day, a day of the Lord. Oh, glory, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry I got a little excited today. But I am so, hallelujah, overjoyed and ready to just burst forth with the praises of Jesus. To God be the glory. This is Pastor Bobby. We'll see you on another episode of We're Burning Daily.